Well, diamonds might be a girl's best friend in Tinseltown, but in the real world, the massive profits they rake in have fueled some of the worst conflicts in recent years. Today, we take a look at the world's largest cutter and polisher of diamonds, Levayev, owned by the Ukrainian-born, Israeli-born uh, billionaire Lev Levayev. Uh, Forbes magazine described him as, quote, the man who crafted the beer's cartel. Levayev's new Madison Avenue store in New York has been the target of almost weekly protests since it opened last November. On Saturday, protesters in New York and London urged people not to shop at Levayev for Valentine's Day. Those protesting Levayev alleged that two, uh, two of his companies and his former business partner, Brooklyn developer Shire Boymulgreen, expanded at least five illegal Jewish-only settlements in the Palestinian West Bank. They also point to his sketchy human rights record in the African country of Angola, where Leviev controls the diamond supply. We invited a Leviev representative to join us on today's broadcast, but they declined. They did send us a statement, however, saying, quote, Protests against Leviev and the Lev Leviev group of companies are politically motivated. Those who personally attack the companies or its founder deliberately neglect their extensive humanitarian and philanthropic work, which includes building schools, orphanages, and fostering economic development in communities around the world. These protests are also inaccurate in their charges against Leviev diamonds. Leviev is a rigorous supporter of the UN mandated Kimberley process concerning conflict free diamonds and ensures that all gemstones of all colors are sourced through internationally recognized legal and ethical guidelines. That, again, the statement of Leviev. Uh, Adala New York, or the Coalition for Justice in the Middle East, is the group that's been organizing the protests against Leviev in New York. We're joined right here in the firehouse now by two members of Adala. Uh, Lubna Mikkel is a Palestinian lawyer, and Katie Unger is with Jews Against the Occupation. We welcome you both to Democracy Now! Explain, Katie, these protests, why you're focusing on Leviev. Well, Lev Leviev is an Israeli billionaire who just recently opened his first New York retail establishment. And after Palestinians who have been struggling nonviolently against the wall and against the seizure of their land in places like Jayus and Belin, pointed Lev Leviev and Shia Boimelgrim out as they had become aware that these two individuals were people who were responsible for the destruction of their communities, the seizure of their land, the impoverishment of their people. And when we learned that Lev Leviev was opening a jewelry store on Madison Avenue, uh, we decided to let him know that New Yorkers, who are committed to human rights, don't accept his participation in our city, don't accept him making more money off of, off of us. And Luda Mikkel, in terms of the work that, uh, that he has done uh, in the occupied territories, can you talk about that? Well, he's engaged in um, real estate development, uh, which, uh, which means for Palestinians um, more settlements, more illegal Jewish-only settlements, especially in Matit Yahu East, uh, in, on the lands of Belain, uh, which is a village that has been uh, doing nonviolent demonstrations for the last three years against the wall, uh, the, the apartheid wall uh, built on its land, confiscating 50 percent of, of, of its uh, farming, farming land. And he's also involved in, I mean, he's most of the Zafim uh, settlement on the lands of Jeyus was, um, was constructed by Levayev. The same, um, more units um, are be being built now in Har Homan, Jabal Abu Ghanim, are built by Levayev. Um, he's also involved in Ma'ale Odemim um, in, in East Jerusalem. These blocks, these settlements, basically divide Palestinian communities into Bantustans. So we're, we're, we're not uh, connected anymore. More, he's also involved in, he owns um, about a quarter of, of the shares of uh, Door Energy or Door Alone, which is the monopoly supplier or provider of, of um, fuel to the Gaza Strip. Um, and and uh, just a few weeks back in December, or a few months back in December, they cut fuel supply by 75 percent, although the Israeli army uh, called for a 12 percent, 5 to 12 percent cut. Now, uh, Leviev has also been involved in, in Angola uh, early on in, in, the, in uh, diamond production there. Could you talk about that as well? Lev Leviev, uh, through a very close relationship with the Dos Santos regime in Angola, has a monopoly on Angolan diamonds. And so one of the things that's so disingenuous about pointing to the Kimberley process is that the Kimberley process only refers to conflict diamonds defined as those diamonds that are involved in 
uh, rebellions against recognized governments. It has nothing to say about recognized regimes like repressive dictatorships like the Angolan regime. It has nothing to say about the conditions that diamonds are being mined under and processed under and delivered under, under any form of regime. And Levi has, has profited immensely off of this relationship with a dictator and off of uh, the oppression of the Angolan people. And human rights activists uh, and journalists in Angola have pointed to uh, humiliation, whipping, and other uh, terrible conditions uh, by the security companies that Lev Levayev's interests in Angola are paying. So what are you calling for right now? Well, we're, uh, we're basically calling for a boycott of Levayev and his uh, jewelry store and his businesses in, in New York City. Uh, we're, we're basically aiming at educating and raising the awareness of New Yorkers of the human rights violations, of the, the wide spectrum of human rights violations that Leviev and Shia Boyma Green are involved in. And um, we're calling for their, we're calling on Leviev and Shia Boyma Green to end their uh, construction of the settlements immediately. I am looking at uh, New York Magazine. They did a profile on Lev Levayev. He just bought the new, the old New York Times building, right? Massive structure in Midtown Manhattan. Um, owns Africa Israel. That's what his company is called, which owns 1,700 FINA gas stations. Describes itself as the country's largest 7-Eleven franchisee. Um, uh, also, in talking about uh, the issue of Angola and the diamonds, um, uh, New York Magazine uh, said that uh, Levayev's alliance with the government led to his gaining primary control of the country's rough diamond supply since 2000. A security company contracted by Levayev was accused this year by a local human rights monitor of participating in practices of humiliation, whipping, torture, sexual abuse, and in some cases, assassinations. Levayev's formal response to the report did not directly address the abuses, but touted his charitable activities in Angola. Um, finally, Katie Unger, on that issue uh, of diamonds in Angola and what you are demanding of Leviev there. Our camp, one of the things about Leviev and one of the reasons why uh, these protests outside Leviev have caught such international attention is that they bring together atrocities around the world. And so in addition to calling on Leviev to end his settlement construction and end his uh, problematic building practices in New York, we are calling on Leviev to ensure human rights in, in his diamond facilities, and we're supporting Angolan human rights activists who are calling for free elections and improved conditions in diamond mines there. Well, we want to thank you both very much for being with us. Katie Unger uh, is a part of the coalition of groups um, that are having protests outside Leviev. Uh, she's a member of uh, New York and Jews Against the Occupation, uh, Libna Mikhail, Palestinian lawyer, a member of Adala New York as well. Thank you for joining us. This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. Tomorrow, Eve Ensler will join us uh, to talk about V-Day. Um, we want to thank uh, Mike Burke and Sharif Odokadus and Aaron Mate and Anjali Kamet and Jeffrey Hagerman, Steve Martinez, Nicole Salazar and Robbie Karen, who helped produce today's broadcast. Mike DeFilippo, Miguel Nagara and Peter Curries, our engineers. Peter, we hope you get better soon. Thanks also to Becca Staley and Hugh Grant, Rebecca Silver, Samantha Chambly, Jay Salnour and John Randolph, Jose Miranda, Laura Chipley, Travis Collins, Vesta Godars. Our website is democracynow.org. A very happy birthday to Michael Kimber and a good Valentine's Day to you all. I'm Amy Goodman with Juan Gonzalez. Thanks for joining us.